Okay, so we have people joining us. So what I like to do today is to give you an overview of what I call the uh, innovation path. Um, and I want to thank Nicolas and his team for giving us the opportunity to present um, the innovation ecosystem and the innovation ecosystem in Cyprus also. Now, yesterday I was uh, listening to, in the researchers' night, uh, ministers giving awards to kids, and I thought that when I was a student, in this country there was no university. Now, I want to start off by showing you this picture. 33 years later, this country has 12 universities, th three of which are funded by the public. It has three research institutes, uh, the Cyprus Institute, the Cyprus Institute of Neurology and Genetics, and the Agricultural Research Institute. It has also some standalone centers of excellence, small units which are specialized in research. And they are listed here. The ones in red are public. The ones in blue are private. So the innovation ecosystem is rather the research and education ecosystem in Cyprus is very young. So when you have a young ecosystem, you need to think how to endow this ecosystem with the proper capability to produce not just knowledge, but innovation. And this is what I think um, we will be discussing. In, I think it's, it's critical and we will be discussing in the next few minutes. Now, the contribution to the economy is significant and it will, is likely to grow to about 10%. Now, I want to say a word of caution here. Having too many universities is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. So, and particularly having them in a country that is just under a million in inhabitants. So, because unfortunately, the university education, it is not linked to the market needs you therefore have to have an extrovert educational ecosystem to bring in students so that you train students for another economy, not for your own economy. So that's something we need to be cautious about because I see some moves of building many private universities and there's a risk there of them being viable. Okay. I also want to show some of the achievements of this ecosystem. Now, this is shown here, again, timelines, and about this time, when the, uh, is this intentional, we've lost the PowerPoint, or are you showing me myself? Okay, so um, about this time, uh, remember, we joined the European Union in 2004. Before we joined the European Union, universities and research institutes were able to have access to European money. Uh, we were an associated member. In 2004, we became a full member. So the research programs began to flow money into the economy of Cyprus. And now, Cyprus ranks number one in the European Union in terms of getting money from the European Commission, competitive money. So for every one euro we put in the European Commission budget in total, as a country, we get 1.17 buck. So we get 17 cent gain. That 17 cent comes out of the pocket of other Europeans. Now that 17 cent, it is gain because the researchers in Cyprus, for every one euro put in the research budget in the European Union, they bring about 3.5. So they're the ones that bring the money. So the strength of the Cypriot economy in the European research, in the European ecosystem, is the research. 
Okay, now, I represent, of course, here, not just the researchers, but of course the Cyprus Institute. And these are some of the achievements of the Cyprus Institute, which, is, by the way, has been established in 2005. It's a very young institute. It's a technology-oriented institute. And over the last few years, it brought in more than 100 million euros in research grants, um, many publications of high quality, a lot of projects going on, a lot of staff, research staff, laboratories, patents, and spin-offs. So excellence, money coming through, innovation uh, also being generated, and I'll come back to that. Um, I'm showing you here some of the best achievers in the country in terms of people, uh, researchers, uh, being able to bring money into the country from the European Commission. Remember, when we talk about research funding, this is competitive funding. When you write a grant um, uh, in Cyprus in a network, you are competing on an equal footing with any European researcher. So there's no subsidy because we are a small country and we're not very rich. So the top performance is the University of Cyprus, the Cyprus Institute, and the Cyprus Technology University, of course, the Cyprus Institute. It's a small unit, it's only, uh, it's about 6% of, of the University of Cyprus in size, yes? It is a small entity, but it's very big in terms of impact. Right, and some of the um, um, uh, centers of excellence are shown here, some of the public universities, the Cyprus Institute of Neurology and so on. Okay. So now let's look at how research generates ideas which potentially can become a product. So that's the process. So this process starts with research, and of course it's like planting seeds, uh, and then you have an incubation period of some of those ideas that you think they might have a commercial application, and then you generate a company or intellectual product patent so that this little, um, uh, uh, this little plant can actually grow. It's not a tree yet. So path one, path two, and path three. Now there are key players. This is the innovation process. It is a long one. It is a very difficult one. And I'm going to explain to you how best to grow some of these ideas into the market. First of all, let's look at path one research. Now, there are key elements uh, that research can become a really good enabler in producing ideas. So the first one, you have to have the culture within your research centers, within the universities. Remember, universities have a mission to perform research, education, teaching, um, and a little bit of innovation. Some people live in their comfort zone and they do not have the innovation strategy in the, particularly the universities. The research institutes are better vehicles to develop that notion because they're, they're very in, uh, in, um, research intensive. So you need a strategy. The first, the second one, you need excellence. If you're underperforming in research, you are never going to get good ideas out of it. The third one, and I want to emphasize that because it really touches on the culture of researchers, you have to have multidisciplinary research. In other words, bring, federate um, different disciplines together, have the infrastructures, and finally, but importantly, the capacity for long-term funding because this process here requires a lot of investment. It's not like planting a seed. It requires investment, and this is where we need um, good planning. Now, let's go to the first one, innovation-oriented culture. So, quite often within institutes and universities, you have ideas that you do not think they have an innovation uh, potential, but they do. So, you need to open up and look in the bulb of these little tools that you can actually tease them apart uh, and uh, analyze them in high resolution, and you bring, you actually find ideas there that are patentable and marketable. Now, the second one is excellence. Now, this is the Cyprus Institute of Neuro uh, the, the Cyprus Institute. 
I worked at the Cyprus Institute of Neurology and sometimes I remember my past. So, the Cyprus Institute is the number one in terms of excellence in the country by figures. 75% of all its publications are in the top 25% of journals, meaning that they're scoring very high in the impact in how many people read them and code them that they are good research so we can actually use as state of the art. Okay, now the second one is multidisciplinary research. Now if you have one individual in a, of a particular discipline thinking that his or her idea is good, it's one way, but these ideas often are not leading to many breakthroughs. You can see the breakthrough potential is lower, whereas if you have different scientists from different fields converging into one idea, then that's get better. Now, often academics work in silos. That is a big problem. In research centers, you can do it, provided you set it up in a way, there's a research center that you uh, enable multidisciplinary research. And the Cyprus Institute is one such case. Um, I am not here, I'm not saying because I represent the Cyprus Institute, it is a good example, but it is the example we have in Cyprus, like it or not, of a lot of multidisciplinary research. We have people studying archaeology, for instance, that they are um, bringing together different fields of science to answer questions. Okay, now, capacity. That's very important. Now, if you want to get a car and fill it up with fuel and you are going to throw those, you don't want uh, halfway through to get out of the car and push the car. You need to have enough fuel to go to throw those. Now, uh, you can fill up the tongue or you can fill up the tongue in, in term stops. Well, obviously. So what I'm describing is the strategic institutional funding versus project funding. Now, I see some people here that are, that are familiar with project funding. For instance, the, the Research and Innovation Foundation of Cyprus is funding this. The Deputy Ministry of Research is funding this. Well, it's trying to fund this trying to find its feet. So we as a country, we must now develop a strategy how to fund institutionally research institutes like other mature economies like Germany, uh, Sweden and other countries. Now, let's now go to the second point where you have the path to the, um, the incubation. An idea comes out of universities. Now, remember universities and research institutes are producing ideas and at some point a spin-off company has been created because they think this is a good idea to bring money to progress that idea. Well, the moment you create a company, you actually place that company in a cemetery. In other words, it's more likely to die than to survive. Why is it likely to die than to survive? because there are more ideas and patents that are money to support. So it is the so-called valley of death. Now, if, and this is a big if, somebody is prepared to put money in the economy, in the company, to take the risk to get that idea into the market, it's a venture capitalist, that's why they're called venture capitalists, then of course some of these ideas will go to the market. Okay, now, if you look at the research process from the beginning to the end, from what we call the low TRL to the market, universities are here. Now, private sector, some of the companies that are technology oriented are on that end, there's a gap in between. And that gap is a real gap. And that's the role where universities and institutes can play to fill it up. So this is the value of death. Remember, universities are generating ideas, the intellectual property, value of death, commercial application. Now, universities and research institutes do not make money by making spin-offs. They donate the ideas, that's the idea, they donate the ideas to the market, and the market, the venture capitalists, are taking the risk to develop them into ideas. I say this because there are some politicians thinking that, oh, why don't you generate a few spin-offs and you have a product and in a few years you are self-funded. Well, that's because it isn't the case. So I 
want to stress that because we are a young country and we are trying to build this process. Now let's go back to this gap that I described earlier on. Uh, at the Cyprus Institute, we think that this gap can be filled by research institutions opening up their gates to companies to develop products and ideas faster than they can actually do within their own capabilities. So um, there are some of the um, infrastructures we have. So um, the Cyprus Institute is an ecosystem of research infrastructures, yeah? Technology, on, or we want to get closer to the industry. We want to bring industry to have access to these infrastructures. These are infrastructures that have been created with taxpayers' money. So we have a responsibility to provide access. So we need to obviously educate our faculty to help industry to come closer. Now, can you do this in Cyprus? Yes, you can. Why? Do you have the players? Well, clearly you have Cyprus Institute is one player, the universities. So the universities are here, the industry is there. Now, if you look at the performance of um, universities and institutions in terms of competitive funding, you see that the last few years, academia raised about 250 million companies raised an equal amount. Well, they must be doing something right in order to be able to raise that amount of money. So we want to, therefore, to bridge this capacity with this capacity, with the infrastructure. And that is key. I want to emphasize, this is very important. This is different from taking spin-offs and so on, yes. So I'm finishing off, I can see the yellow card. And this is described here, academia, industry, collaboration. That gap is the one that you need to have a strategy to fill it up, and we think that this is the key, particularly when you're a young country and you want to really have a, a massive impact in terms of academia and a research um, uh, investment, you must try and link industry with that, and, uh, and uh, this is what we have as a, as a kind of uh, strategy at the Cyprus Institute to uh, enable uh, more uh, sources of revenues. Thank you very much. Yes, if you have questions, yes, please. You want? Because it's live stream, it's online. Yes, yes, by all means. First of all, it was actually it was the, last, the best presentation I've seen and more clear in the last 10 years and I'm into this ecosystem. <laughs> well done. And I have seen also a lot abroad. I mean, but so clear stuff. Um, first time and uh, by the way I have seen a number you said 250 from curry from mostly yeah, yeah. the curry some, of, some of these are curry they're not all of them yes I curry think, is the Cyprus I, I Association think it's of it's double uh, if Tassos mentioned correctly maybe I, I don't know maybe it's the well impact. the figures you, um, the, the figures are live you know they're changing by the day but but we but the question is um, it's the one, the one question I have t done it in a lot of people. I mean, do our universities they need accelerators and incubators connected with the public, private sector in order to take all this research into innovation yes. or not? Okay. Because there is a debate here. I mean, how do you do it? You have a, you have your own incubator? No, no, no. You don't we have. We don't need the incubator. I mean, with a, 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 what I mean is just to clarify and finish. I mean, an entity that also VCs are in. You know, a company that also venture capital with you. Can I have the slides back? Can I ha can I have the slides back, please? Okay. So, so you are saying, do you have an incubator where you incubate these companies, and some venture capitalists come in and look at them and put money in it? Well, we don't. An incubator has to be an entity, by the way, yes, a legal entity. And, and no, 
we, we have created a vehicle, you know, a company to have shares which... Now, the incubator is the institute, put it this way. I mean, let's, 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 let's translate this into, into sort of more practical um, meaning. What do you mean by that? Well, if you have a company uh, and you have intellectual property, a patent, clearly you have a little plant. It needs to grow more for an investor to see its potential. So that period of incubation can happen within your premises, provided you strike a deal, there are some sort of legal issues that you need to deal with. So it can happen within, or it can happen outside your premises, and that's the incubator that you're referring to, yes? So institutes and universities can be the technological incubators, the enablers from the technology provision perspective, but in terms of now the company becoming bigger and bigger, it has to get out. It's not the job of the universities to have a, a Google next to them or whatever. Yeah? So I hope I answered. Now, what I want to say, however, is just one point. That's the path from the universities out to the economy. Now, what I am describing here, which perhaps was not clear, is something else. These people on the right, the companies, the Kari people, have ideas. Some of their products need to be improved, but they don't have the infrastructure or the knowledge to do it. So they come to the people and the infrastructure to do it. So it's a different concept. It's a different way. It's an enabler uh, for more innovation than it already exists in the private sector. And I think that's a most, much more successful approach. Uh, thank you, Stavro. I know you've been working on this for many years. Uh, you are like an evan evangelist <laughs> for the last 20 years on this. But how are we doing as a country um, throughout this process? Um, w w where are we good at? Where are we missing stuff? And how do we bridge that gap of uh, having the whole process together? Thank you. Well, as a country, I mean, there are obviously, the country is producing innovation, is producing ideas, universities are producing ideas. There are some uh, bottlenecks, uh, legal ones, as you know, they still, the universities, the public universities cannot create companies and there is a debate. In my view, uh, that's an incorrect approach, but okay. Um, uh, so unfortunately, not all politicians are able to understand this. So, and I'm not wearing the hat of one, by the way. So, uh, so uh, the, the, the problem we have is actually here. Sorry, uh, it's here. It's on this side, on this. It's actually understanding all these elements. So, okay, the culture is important. And I do I, I want to stress this because some university people like to be living in the, in the comfort of their educational mission rather than their innovation mission, which they don't think is a ma very major one. Excellence is good in Cyprus. Multidisciplinary research, again, it's a matter of mentality because to get scientists from different fields collaborating, sometimes you need to transcend the boundaries of your egos. Infrastructure is okay, we have quite a lot. That is the one we have difficulty in understanding in this country yet. Okay, the long term, the capacity, to build capacity. So, um, to build this, if you look at the most successful countries uh, in doing the, what I call the institutional funding is the United Kingdom and Germany. These two have worked out well. Yeah, and Sweden also too. So, uh, and there are models, um, also Austria to some extent, uh, uh, Switzerland, but the, t the UK and, and Germany have done it very well. So you need to invest money into the, in a, into the university and research ecosystem, and in particular, I favor research institutes. Yeah, research institutes are obviously much more in research intensive, so they're focused. Uh, they have, and if they are technology oriented, even better. So that is a good model, provided you actually sustain them. I say this because we've created a few centers of excellence in the country, because um, Europe gave us the money. By the way, we played a, a big part in that, uh, Cyprus, when we had the presidency of the European Union. Uh, and now they want to shut them down, or they think that they can survive. Well, that's because we don't understand how research works. 
So if you don't understand that, then you cannot live and have a strategy. What I call, if you have this, you have a strategy. If you have this, you have a policy. There are two things, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's not open that question, that, that, that debate. Okay. Thank you.